Hello and welcome back. In this video, we'll continue discussing the foundations of biomolecular sequence alignment. In our last video, we covered the why and the what. In this video, we'll delve into the how. Basically answering this question, how do we actually compute the optimal alignment between two sequences? Now we're going to uh, focus on dynamic programming approaches and how those are applied and adapted in the BLAST algorithm that we use most commonly for database searching. And we'll build towards more advanced profile and hidden mark of a model approaches that we'll mention a little bit later. But before that, we want to build up our mental model for later, for those later approaches, by considering one of the most simple approaches uh, possible. That's the so-called dot plot method that places one sequence on the vertical axis of a little 2D grid like the one shown here. Some people call this little grid an alignment matrix, but it's just a table. And the other sequence is on the horizontal side. And then what we go through is we simply put dots where the horizontal and vertical sequence values match. In other words, where the characters are the same in these two sequences, like so. We have our A with our A, so we put a dot, and then we go across and the next match will be this C with a C, there's another C with a C here, and an A with an A, a C with a C again, a C with a C again, and a G with a G, and then finally one last G with a G. So we've placed all these dots in our dot plot or our little alignment matrix here. Now diagonal runs of consecutive dots, that means one dot after another that go diagonally down from one corner to the bottom corner here, indicate matched segments of sequence. That's because it indicates that you know, one character followed by another character match in sequential order in the two sequences. So like here, for example, we have an A and a C that follow each other, and they're the same in both the sequences, the one on the horizontal and the one on the vertical axis of our little table here. And again, this ACG is found in both sequences in these locations. Finally, our C and G here. So these are the diagonal runs that really we're looking for. These are the bits, the features of these uh, dot plots that indicate an alignment is present here. So what we look for is the longest one of those most frequently. And here we have a three character consecutive match this A, C, G that uh, is highlighted in this approach. Okay, question then. What would a dot matrix of two identical sequences look like? By identical sequences, I mean the sequence that we place on the two sides of our little table here or our dot plot are the same. See their characters are the same? What would this look like? Well, Hopefully you've had a chance to think about that. We'll place dots just as we did before where the two characters match. And what you're going to see here is a diagonal run straight from the top corner here, the first cell in the alignment table or the matrix, to the last cell, from one corner to the bottom corner. What does that last cell represent? Well, it represents the end of the two sequences, of course. right? We've reached the end of both sequences when we're down there in that bottom corner. What does the first cell represent? Well, it represents the tar start of the two sequences, the A and the A in that case, right? So let's keep that in mind, please, that it's these diagonal runs that we're looking for, uh, uh, because this will become important when we get to more complicated methods in a few moments. So now in practice, these dot matrices or dot plots for long, realistic kind of uh, looking sequences can be noisy to the point we're looking at something like this. It looks a bit like, you know, someone sneezed on my computer screen here. You know, that's not a nice thought in the current climate, of course. So what can we do to try and reduce this noise, all these dots that are all over the place in this plot and not really representing these runs of consecutive sequential matches that we're often looking for? How can we pull out that kind of signal from all the noise of the kind of sneeze-like view that we have here? Well. One common and very useful solution is to use a so-called windowing strategy. Now what this means is rather than compare just character by character, we'll compare groups of characters at a time. Now these groups of consecutive characters, there are the window, that's the window that we're talking about. So it's effectively like we're drawing a, a little window box here, I'm drawing it in red around some of our characters. Here I'm 
picking a window size of three, so three characters, I'm drawing this little red box around them. And now I'm going to ask, is there a match to a similar size window of characters in the other sequence? Now, how we do this looks very much like we slide the window a box along one of the sequences to see if there are matches to all the characters within the window of our first sequence. So here, for example, the two windows that I have highlighted, uh, they don't match in all their characters. All three uh, positions here aren't the same. So we leave it blank. We don't put a dot in this one. And we go on and we consider the next window. So we've slided that second window over here and we look again at the comparison. And again, there's no match and we keep on going. And we keep on going now. I'm moving to the next group of characters in that first sequence by sliding the original window down in its sequence. And I keep going. I keep repeating here. So again, there's no match here. I, I, again, there's no match. And I continue, no match. And finally, here, when I found a three character window that match with another three character window in the other sequence, I'm going to put my dot. This is a dot because all three characters of the window match that means my stringency is three i must have three matches in order to put a dot and i can keep going and keep going and there'll be no other dots in this case until finally you know like here we've examined all possible windows and this would be our final answer for a window size of three and a stringency of three okay now that's kind of extreme and we don't have to be so stringent. We can actually reduce our stringency to a lower value. So in this case, let's try a, a threshold of, of two in this case. So what this means is that we'll only require two characters within our window pairs to match in order to put a dot in our dot plot matrix. Okay, so that's our stringency of Two. So we're going to do the same, the mechanics will be the same. I start with uh, my first window here, it's still a window size of three, but the difference is my stringency is two. So here I have a dot right away. These first two windows actually will result in a dot because the A and the C now are enough to meet our stringency threshold. Those A, C matches, those first two characters in the window are sufficient to give me a dot in this case. Okay, and we continue just like before. In this case, it's not a match, so no dot. And again, no match. I'm sliding my window along, and now I have to go and consider the, the, the first sequence and move my window and slide it again and continue. In this case, I do have a match here, right? Because the C in the first position and the C in the last position of this window do match. That's our string C of two, so I'm going to put my dot here in my dot plot. And I'm gonna keep on going. Right, So maybe rather than uh, torture you and keeping the animation going, I'll just flip to the end to see what the result would look like. So here I've considered all windows and I've got my final dot plot. So again, what we can see here is that there are less dots, of course, than when we use the match stringency of three, where we only have one dot in the final answer, but we still have much fewer than the original character by character approach that we started with. That was the first plot shown in all these slides here on the left. So we've drawn out the signal by being a little bit more strict about what we're looking for using this windowing kind of approach. Okay. So here's a, a more realistic example rather than the little toy short sequences we were walking through. So here is a with a window size of five. Okay. And we can see these long diagonal runs of consecutive dots. Those are the aligned bits we're after in this case. So here is the same with a window size of seven. Let me flip between those two for a moment so you can see the noise filtering kind of effect that we're after here. So again, this is the window size seven. Here's the window size five, window size seven. Okay, now what hopefully your eyes can tell you uh, there is that after this main uh, signal, this is the thing we're after, these long runs of diagonal plots, these are our aligned segments. Now notice that there's some breaks. What do these breaks actually mean here in these long diagonal runs of matches? 
Well, these breaks are our indels. Remember our insertions and deletions that we have to place gaps in one sequence or the other sequence uh, to, to enable these long runs of consecutive matches. These gaps here are our indels, right? Indels, there we go. Okay, so what do we use these kind of dot plots for? Well, we use them mainly for visually assessing the similarity of to protein or nucleic acid sequences and more frequently we use them for finding local repeat sequences within larger sequences by comparing a sequence to itself. So in that case repeats what they will uh, appear as will be diagonal runs stacked vertically or horizontally off the diagonal, the main diagonal. Let me show you an example of this here. So this is an example of uh, human LDL protein sequence and it's the same sequence on both sides of our little dot plot table here so you can maybe see uh, here that there's a straight dark line that runs from the top corner to the bottom corner that's expected that's our diagonal because you know it's the same sequence on both sides we would expect that pattern there but it's also really noisy there are dots everywhere okay so let's use our windowing approach to clean things up a little so here I'm going to go uh, use a window size of 23 and a match stringency within a window of seven. You know, I picked these values somewhat arbitrarily. And you can see that it's much cleaner. Let's see that again. Let's flip back to here, a uh, window size of one, a stringency of one. And let's flip back to a window size of uh, 23 and a stringency of seven. So apart from that dramatically cleaner result and that big, long, straight, diagonal run here that we've got highlighted in red which again we expect because it's the same sequence on both sides we can see this kind of banding pattern right see these runs these diagonal runs that are off the main diagonal these are indicative of repetitive subsequences within this longer sequence that we're comparing particularly if you note if your eyes can note this region here this quadrant if you will well these are the repetitive subsequences present many times within the main sequence. Let's examine one. For example, this first little repetitive subsequence shown here with the red arrow, it's present, of course, where it is, where it sits itself, that would be the, along the diagonal, and we can see that on both sides of our table. But it's also present elsewhere, actually eight additional times, right? So you can see here where all the arrows are in those diagonal runs. So what this means, and what it clearly shows, is that this subsequence is present multiple times. Okay, and, and this visual approach really clearly shows that. We use this quite a lot when we're looking at long genomic sequences, looking for repetitive elements and, and these sorts of things. That's one of the main uses for this visual dot plot approach. Okay, so it's getting close to your turn to try this out. This video segment will end in just a moment and I want you to go and try out one of these two web links here. These will be linked to on our class website as well. Uh, these are little web apps. They're coded in R, the programming language we're going to learn in, in a week, uh, two weeks time, actually, you start learning it and you'll be able to write these sorts of things yourself. Now, I wrote this little app specifically to help you understand the key dot plot parameters that are going to be useful for uh, more advanced techniques that we're going to consider in a moment or two. Now, both these two links will take you to the same app. They're just mirrors of each other that are there in case one of the, the web pages, one of the apps has too many simultaneous users and becomes too unresponsive. If that happens to you, just try the second link. Now, the questions I want you to think about when you start playing with the little sliders on this web page, it includes, includes well, well, what's shown here? Well, I'll, I'll maybe answer that for you first. What we've got is two similar length sequences, but one is a dot plot of a protein sequence and the other is a dot plot of the corresponding nucleotide sequence but both the same number of characters and i want you to think about well why does the dna plot have more dots in it than the same length protein plot and then once you've thought about that for a little bit how can you reduce the noise in both of these plots right and then what would um having a match stringency larger than the window size result in, and why? And then finally, can you think of, you know, 
what, what are the main limitations of this approach? Or why does this dot plot approach kind of suck actually? Like what are its, its limitations? Why would we not want to use this too often for comparing lots of sequences, for example? What is the main limitation here? Okay, so I'll invite you to try those out and think about that and uh, post comments and, and questions and discussion on our Piazza site under, uh, under this week's topics. And once you've had enough of that, come back and then please join me for our next video in this sequence where we expand on this dot plot matrix approach and introduce the dynamic programming approach for sequence lab. This is going to take the same fundamental idea of the dot plot, putting one sequence on one side of a table and the other sequence on the other side. But instead of dots, we're going to put numbers, right? We like numbers. We're kind of getting nerdy and we like counting things and comparing things. And this will give us lots of advantages over the dot plot approach. So we'll see you then in the next video. Uh, thanks for watching.